according to John. And this is a live stream that I've put together to help those who are hearing the sound of my voice, those led here to this stream, to this uh, podcast. You can go to gospel at gospel according to John Campbell at YouTube uh, here on Facebook. If you've seen the feed or you're part of my my uh, friend group, I'm sure you see it, and I'll probably set up a group pretty soon. Um, these are discussions to help you if you are interested in finding out how to follow Jesus Christ, if you're a believer and looking for maturity in Christ, if you're looking for deeper understanding. I, I hope that these discussions, these podcasts, are going to help you in your walk with Christ. And I, you know, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, I pray it blesses you. And usually, what I do is I'll say a prayer. Uh, before now, I'm using some some new uh, equipment here, so let's see how long this camera lasts. But I, and so that's a good reason to pray, <laughs> and a good reason to pray also. A better reason is that I might be led by the Holy Spirit to speak, that you might be led to by the Holy Spirit to listen, and that together we will allow for God to participate with us to reveal a truth that will allow us to. See Jesus and him say, well done, good and faithful servant. So um, why don't I say a prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by your power and your might, I come to you now and ask that you would sanctify this time, that you would we invite your Holy Spirit, who you have said will give wisdom and knowledge into all things. And so with that said, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you lead me, you unction me, you allow me, I invite your spirit to move through me to help those who want to know more about your word, to proclaim the gospel, as you said, that that we would receive power to be your witnesses. So I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, this word on witchcraft and how it's infiltrated the church, I pray that you would lead me in what to say, that your name would be given all glory and your name would be given all praise. I worship you and thank you. And thank the work of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, so bless you. Today we're going to talk about witchcraft. And uh, I think it's very important. I've had a few co conversations and watched a few videos. And my spirit has, has stirred on this topic. Because I, it's pretty obvious that the next religion of the world, especially the Western world, but the whole world, will be witchcraft. It will replace all of the other religions. It will be witchcraft. You know, uh, I remember when I was looking at different documents that talked about plans of the government, they talked about in some of these um, uh, future plans to uh, green uh, reforestation plans, but they said that the religion at the time would be nature worship, which is another name for witchcraft. And so I think it's important for the people of God to consider what our Father expects of us with regards to witchcraft. I, I know there's many different beliefs here listening to me, but my hope is to share what the Bible says. And my hope is to share what the Spirit of God will convict on so that you can wisely make choices with regards to serving Christ. Um. Witchcraft is popularized all the time. It's, it's almost every movie. The, the hero is some form of witch or sorcerer or, or um, has powers in some way. Everyone has a power. Every song, we listen to the lyrics and you can barely understand the lyrics. What are they talking about? With imagery of light and stars and, and you know, what is it talking about? Witchcraft is being taught to us. Witchcraft is common in terms of spells and charms. There are people who try to use love potions on people to, to, to draw them. We see witchcraft in many, many forms. And because of ignorance, a lot of us don't know how to, how does God want us? How does our Heavenly Father, how does Father Yah, Yahweh Almighty, how does He want his people, his people who are the ecclesia, who are, is Israel or grafted into Israel through what we call the church or the assembly. How do we respond? And for you, disciple, you, Christian, how do you respond? What does your father want from you? How do you instruct people on witchcraft? What's acceptable? 
what is witchcraft? Well, first, before we do anything else, I think a passage that I like to quote, and I think it's important, is um, to define who you are in Christ. Let's look at, look at here. We're going to look at a Bible app here, and I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And what it says here is, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, that we are, it says, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. This is what we are. And this has always been the call for God's people. We can look at the very first calling, the formation of Israel. And we go to uh, um, Exodus chapter 19, verse there's 5. And he says, Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandment, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the children of Israel. So we see that this is a covenant for Israel that was passed through the, through the church, today in the church, today in what we call the ecclesia, the called out ones who were born again through Jesus Christ. We then are also a priesthood. And it's important to understand that when we think about witchcraft, because when we think of, when we're going to talk, talk about what witchcraft is, we have to know that our relationship to God now, as he's allowed us to be born again, is not just to be over children and friends. We are in an office. We are a priesthood with responsibilities. This is why he has given us power and authority, because we have a job. And the children of God serve as priests. So today, my hope for you is that you recognize that that's who you are. And if you are a priest, then this next passage is very, very important. If you said, Jesus is Lord, I am a disciple of Jesus, and yes, I'm a disciple. Well, Jesus was what? What was Jesus? Jesus was a, is a high priest and a king, a royal priest. Okay? I'm talking at the same time and doing this. <laughs> you know, let me go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. I got, I got carried away. It says here, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you as being priest to me, for me. Because you've forsaken the law of your God, I will forget your children. Okay. Our God is saying that he will forget his children. We cannot be priests if we're ignorant. And family, today, people are ignorant. Today, everybody is ignorant of the Bible. And what we believe is what our church believes or our YouTuber, favorite YouTuber says. And I want you to understand that unless you are following the laws of God, you are no priest to him. And the priesthood is the covenant. The priesthood. Okay, one more just to, to make sure we got this. Let's listen to the words of Jesus. And, and many of us have heard this, but I want to make sure that I'm very, I'm hitting the point. Jesus says this near the end of his Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon probably ever. His most famous sermon and the most famous sermon ever ever preached. And he says at the very end, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied and in your name, have we not pro in your name done many wonderful uh, uh Oh, let's go. Have we not prophesied in your name, casted out demons in your name, and done many wonderful wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Uh-oh, lawlessness. Lawlessness. What's lawlessness? It's not your keep, you're not keeping his laws. You are no priest to him. 
So family, when we're going to talk about witchcraft, we have to see what the laws of God say about witchcraft. We have to examine them because God says he does not change. He does not change. He says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not destroyed. The Bible says in Hebrews of Jesus, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When God makes a decision, a law, he doesn't change his mind. And that law is binding. So we can look at the laws he's given in the past to help us understand witchcraft. And that's the first thing I think we can look at. We need to understand what is witchcraft. Well, simply put, witchcraft is rebellion to God's laws. It's spiritual rebellion. So let me let me show it to you. If we go to 1 Samuel, and I'm gonna go back to the app here. So 1 Samuel chapter 15. And verse 23, I, I, I show these scriptures, I hope that that helps you to go look at the scriptures for yourself, because my opinion is not important. Other pastors' opinion, not important. It's not the signs that we look at. It's not all the miracles. It's not the charisma. It is the word of God that we're called to live by. So let's see what God says here. Saul was made a king, and God says this to him. I'll go back a little bit. Samuel, the prophet, is speaking on God's behalf to Saul, who did not fully obey him when he sent him to conquer the Amalekites. He did not fully obey. He left some of the good portions of, 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 of sheep and goats. He left their king. God said to wipe out everything. And he did not do it. And Samuel said, Has the Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings? And sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Okay, saying something here, and I'm also pausing because I really should have put some glasses on. I think the podcast is gonna. I'm gonna have to have a different logo or something like that. You're gonna see me with glasses. But here we go. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? You know. Does God want us to offer and do great exploits and you know run around the world and do do things that we feel is important more than what he has said for us to do? No, he wants us to do what he says. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. And here we go. We see that phrase. Uh Uh-oh. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft. Rebellion. When God says things that we're to do, when we choose to rebel spiritually, our rebellion seeks out other power to live our life. Our Father has given laws and blessings if we obey them to allow us to live life and prosper. But when we walk in rebellion, we seek demonic energy and demonic energy insight and demonic knowledge in order for us to do what we want instead of what God wants for us. And this here is a trap. It's a trap of the devil. It is the same ancient battle that we're tempted with. You see, Satan deceives the whole world. Let's take a look at this passage here. Let's go to Revelations. Oh, Revelation. Chapter 12, and uh, let's go to verse 7. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But But they did not prevail, 
nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Uh Uh-oh. Who deceives the whole world? Who is this? This ancient serpent. Well, this ancient serpent? Who is that? Well, we go all the way back to the very beginning. When humanity was first tempted, you see, there's nothing new under the sun. And we see that this ancient serpent shows up right here in the garden. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Who's that serpent? The devil, Satan. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, or you lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of the fruit and ate. She gave it to her husband, and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves coverings. You know, one of the the occult organizations of the world, the Freemasons, talk about fig leaves, fig leaves covering themselves, that they made for themselves. It's that an idea that we can make our own covering. You know, here we see the ancient battle again. The woman here the, the the wife of the first son of God, Adam, is very much like the wife of the second son of God. Adam was a son of God, and now Jesus is the son of God. Oh, you can look in Luke chapter 4. You can see that, that that's what they said of Adam. He was a son of God in the image of God, the likeness of God, until he fell. But Jesus did not sin, made in God's image likeness, crowned forever. And his bride, the woman, is us. It's you and me. We are the bride of Christ, the church today, the ecclesia, the disciples of Jesus. And today the devil is tempting us exactly the same as he tempted Eve. We are tempted with rebellion to the laws of God. Did God really say that you should not do this. Did God really say you should not do Should you not lust? If you commit sexual morality, will you really die? If you, if you, if you lust and look at porn, will you really die? Galatians 5, 19, 20 and 21. Read that. Those who commit those sins will not inherit the kingdom. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And so this is why we have to talk about this family. Because we're in a time where We're going to see witchcraft is also included in a list of things that you will not see eternal life. But we think that we can do things in our ignorance and still follow Christ. Our God has said that he is Lord and will not share his glory with another. And if you are operating witchcraft, you are serving another deity. Now, I just said that witchcraft was rebellion. It is rebellion. Spiritual rebellion or spiritual adultery. Oh, we got to look at more. Okay, let's let's keep looking. Um, the garden, witchcraft allows us knowledge and that knowledge, spiritual knowledge outside of the will of God for you to make you wise and to give you influence and to give you power. And it's real power. Some of us think, oh, witchcraft, we're religious. We think witchcraft is just trivial. Oh, no, no, no. When Satan tempted Jesus, when he tempted him and offered him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, he said, these I give you if you just bow down to me. If Satan can do that to Jesus, can he not offer it? to people today? 
Is there a reason why so many stars and political people and people of renown keep saying that they sold their soul to the devil? If you look up celebrity hand satanic hand signs, why are so many celebrities doing all these weird satanic hand signs? Because they've given their heart, their loyalty, their devotion, made a covenant with the devil. And they're doing witchcraft. When you hear the term black girl magic, it's witchcraft they're talking about. When they say, I'm a god, it's witchcraft they're talking about. When someone says star man, I'm a star man, or wishing on a star, or you know Hollywood stars, in the Bible, stars refer to angels. Oh, I guess I have to go there. Revelations chapter, chapter 1. Let's take a look. When you see the term star, and you see it everywhere, star lord, star man, star everywhere. Well, it's referring, let's see if I can go down here. Jesus is referring to the various churches, and he gives a description. He says here, I am he who loves, I am he who lives and, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Oh, hallelujah. Write the things that you have se seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and in the seven and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels. Oh, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Okay, well, that's just a little, and you know, I usually, there we go. You check it out. Revelations chapter one, go down 18. Down. Why am I saying that? stars. There is the worship of other deities that are happening commonly in the world. And we just looked and saw that ignorance is no excuse. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is no excuse. So finally, one more, just one more. You know, the first king of Israel was Saul. And God was going to establish his family dynasty forever. But he sinned. He didn't do all that God told him to do. But it wasn't just that. God said he would not allow him. He would punish him for not doing all he said. But then he said as well in First Chronicles. Oh, let's go to chapter 10. Sorry. Chapter 10, verse 13. And this is what it says. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness because he had commit he committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord, therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Okay. Our God does not change. Let's see what he says about witchcraft. See, we're a kingdom of priests, king priests. And just like Saul, we have been given a birthright to rule. But if we consult mediums, if we do witchcraft, we will be spiritually dead. Oh, no? Yes, we will. The Bible says, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I, the Lord, do not change. So let's take a look here. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19. This is actually the laws given to the priests. It's a really interesting book because if you understand that you're a priest and you understand and decipher how all these terms mean spiritually, it can be a really deep book. It says, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, God says, give Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. No mediums. Don't seek after mediums. Don't seek after people who they, they read your palm. 
Don't seek after people who give you your horoscope. Don't seek after people who show your, your tarot cards because spirits are guiding them. Don't do that. Familiar spirits, people who have spirits familiar with you and, or, or, and people, don't seek after these spirits or be defiled by them. Oh, well, so that's a commandment we should not do. Well, let's see what else. Let's go to Exodus chapter 22. And uh, let's go to verse 18. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Exodus 22. Let's do it this way. And we're going to scroll down to verse 18. Now look what it says. You shall not permit a sorceress to live. Whoa, whoa. That's not, is that nice? Is that good? No. And why is that? Okay, so witchcraft, as we look at the ancients, it were people who allied themselves with demonic beings, beings who were not devoted to the laws and statutes of God, who operated in negative demonic energy. You see, wherever God dwells, no demon can dwell with God. Wherever God resides, it becomes holy to him. But our Father will not override our will, and he will not share his glory with another. And when we bring in other spirits through practices, oh, we're not aware of it, but through practices, through um, outright worship, he will not dwell with us. And it's why he... he that's why Israel, the nation, was discontinued from their heritage because they did not reverence the Father. They were doing witchcraft, and finally, they did not accept Christ. These witches, these practices of worshiping other gods, the Baals, the Astrophs, these eventually caused them to stumble and be punished. The laws were such that a witch was not permitted to live. live. Why is that? Because witches will operate out of bitterness, rebellion, anger. A witch will seek to, to seek a, 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 a demonic force in order to get a, a, an advantage over someone, to manipulate them with spiritual power. It could mean that they stifle and arrest that person. Maybe that person does not receive love or they manipulate them to have affection for them. Maybe they manipulate that person into an injury or that person can die or, or someone in their family die. And, and is that possible? Yes, family. Oh, yes. It is why we pray to be in the full armor of God. It's why, it's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, no weapon formed against me will prosper and every tongue I will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So we have to condemn it. Witchcraft is very serious. It was enough to, vi to, to end the covenant that God had with Israel. He said in the Ten Commandments that God would visit the iniquity of the fathers unto the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. That did not worship him, but worship images in the sky above or the earth beneath or the waters under the earth. You're not to do that. And because of their spiritual adultery, curses are in people's bloodlines. Some of you have curses in your bloodlines. Some of you see power. You have visions and dreams. You can see spirits. You have premonitions of bad things coming. And you're wondering, how is that? Well, it could be demons in your bloodline. Because those premonitions are allowed. Likewise, if you have years of people devoted to Christ and walking in the Spirit, then you can also receive blessings in your bloodline. If all you can see is bad things are coming, you, need, you should consider deliverance, renouncing all things in the name of Jesus. See, we perish for a lack of knowledge. Did anyone say that to you? Did you know that God has a death penalty for a uh, sorceress? Well, what about Scarlet Witch? I mean, I watch Marvel. What about Sabrina, the teenage witch? 
What about Sparina? <laughs> what about Bewitched? What about all the Marvel Universe and Lord of the Rings? Gandalf. Oh, come on, Gandalf. Is he? Well, he's a wizard. Is, that, is it okay to be a wizard? Family, it's time that we become aware of what God is telling us not to do in witchcraft. I'm going to get to I'm going to give some real practicals in a second, but I'm going to give a couple more scriptures. Because right now, so many of us do not know what we're doing. We're involved in Christian yoga. But yoga is transcendental meditation. It opens up your third eye. It opens up the barrier that allows demons to come right in without your prote- without protection. There are people getting possessed by demons by doing yoga. And now we have Christian yoga. <laughs> so, so what am I saying? That is an error, family. That's an error. Now we have people um, that open doorways. What do witches do? Witches will, will use influence. They will use seduction. So sex. There are a lot of witches who are in the porn industry. There are a lot of prostitutes in the, in, in, in the industry because the Bible says the two will become one flesh. So the spirits are allowed to move from one person to another who are making a covenant a sexual covenant. Oh, yes. Well, we, we, we're taught it just, this sex doesn't mean anything. Oh, family, sex is a covenant. And when you come together with somebody, that spirit in you is able to move to them and vice versa. Unless you are protected in a sacred covenant of God. The Bible says that the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Meaning the children of darkness, this demonic peoples of Satan. They understand the, the, the way that the world is working spiritually more than many believers because believers don't read their Bibles and believers are not seeking the Father in the Spirit. You mean all these sexual partners I've had, I've, I've collected all these people I've had sex, there's their connection? Well, you got soul ties. That's why you're thinking about having sex with another person while you're having sex with your wife or your husband. Real talk. It's soul ties. It's witchcraft demonic power. And so today we need to begin to talk about how not to perish. When you make agreement, when you get someone to read your palm family, some of you or tarot cards, you've done it as a believer. You have created a demonic altar. You have made a pledge. It's like someone making a pledge to Jesus, right? You have, by seeking the the tools, the outright tools of the devil, you have shown worship, obedience to him. The whole world is being led into all kinds of rituals that we don't know nothing about. You take water and pour it on your head. You don't know nothing. Okay? Is that like baptism? You don't, you don't, don't, no, none of us think about whatever. We throw up hand signs at some rock concert and we don't know it's a curse. We say, well, we're in the six. What the six? Six is the eight, is the sixth day God created man. Man having, man, the rule of man is six, six, six. You don't see when people throw it up. We don't understand. We are a people without knowledge, thinking that we can do all these things and the blood of Jesus cover us. But Jesus has said, we must be holy. That people perish for lack of knowledge, that the ignorant believer will not inherit the kingdom. The one who sanctifies himself, who has oil in a lamp, That's the one that enters. And I'm saying it plainly because many of us are in churches where so long as we sing a song from Hillsong, where our hands are up in the air, we're worshiping the band, we feel happy, we love Jesus. We feel that that alone can wash away all our iniquity. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I was told by someone, you know, I should smile a little bit and and tell a few jokes. (laughs) You know, maybe too heavy. So here, I'm going to (laughs) smile. Iniquity. Well, that's not something to smile about, though. Witchcraft is the battle now. 
When the Bible says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits in high places, not flesh and blood. In order for those spirits in high places to operate here, they need a human being to be obedient. Just like the Father will not override you and requires your permission to go repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus, to ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you, to then speak out of faith to cast out demons. He needs, he needs someone to stand in the gap. To say, here am I, send me to bring in the harvest. So the demonic realm needs someone to agree. And you can agree whether you are complicit in the agreement, meaning you outright want to worship a demon, which don't do that. Or it could be that you are totally oblivious. Like you're hoping to be Superman with his snake on the front of his chest. Oh, that's not an S family. That's nigh. <laughs> you want to be Batman or Spider-Man or whatever other unclean man that the book of Leviticus talks about. You want to be the hawk or the eagle. Ain't no one wants to be the dove. Ain't no one wants to be the lamb. (laughs) And see, I'm saying this because witchcraft is in our midst. The Bible says, come out of her, my people, or you will share in her plagues. Speaking of Babylon and spiritual Babylon, come out of her. You know, in the past, when Aaron was waiting for Moses, the people pressured him. And he felt pressured, and he allowed them to make a calf that they would worship. They, they, the, the calf, they said, this is Yahweh. We will make this calf and worship God, the Most High God who saved us. They danced around naked, and they tried worshiping God the same way that they worshiped the, the demonic gods that God brought them out of. And God's answer to that was, to allow Moses to say, call the Levites, the priests, to run through their brethren with swords and cut down all offenders. 3,000 people died on that day. Oh, hallelujah, family. Today in our churches, you see the lights down low. You see the laser lights and the, sp- and the, the smoke. You see the, the cell phones up. And you hear the band play. And if you, weren't, if you didn't know the language, it would sound like a rock concert you just came from. It could be a, a concert where people worshiping the devil outright. Some heavy metal concert. Because we're doing the same things. Now, I'm a mu- musician, so I'm not here saying no one. I don't like music and instruments. That ain't it. It's that we have replaced the spirit of God, the joy of our Lord, the worship of God, and the right application of his laws. And instead, we are using other means to win and seduce people, not to the obedience to the Father, but to man-made traditions and teachings. It's okay for us to idolize Luke Skywalker and Anakin and the Mandalorian and family. <laughs> These shows are entertaining. Lord of the Rings, Neo, The Matrix. Yes, I get it. But so much of them witches, family. Scarlet Witch, a witch. Some of us know more about the Jedi Order than we know about our life as disciples. We are wavering between two opinions and we're going to fall as a result. Because our God will not share his glory with another. Check this out, family. Here we go. Isaiah, this is coming in my spirit. So Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Oh, no, that's not it. Let's go. Isaiah. Chapter 8. I'll start verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards. uh Uh-oh, Gangdolf. Uh Uh-oh. Who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? You know, when we're talking to a dead relative, 
And I know we miss them. I've had people I love. Should we be talking to the dead? The Bible says here, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, the law, the Bible, the Torah, the words of God, and the testimony through the Holy Spirit of Jesus, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There's no light in them. Let's break down a few things. I'm not gonna. I don't want to talk super long here. I don't know how long this camera go last. So I want. I actually want to do shorter videos. So let me just break down. You can look at Galatians chapter five nineteen. It breaks down real plain what sins you should not be committing. Okay, I mean I think it's a good habit for every disciple, every person interested in knowing their future destiny should read this passage here that says, "Now the works of the flesh are evident." I'm going to go to it right here. Okay. Galatians chapter 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Oh, I'm going to go to a different translation. Let's, let's look here. Make it real plain. Okay. New Living Translation. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are are very clear. Sexual morality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, sorcery. Yes, Harry Potter, sorcery. Yes, Gandalf, sorcery. Sabrina, sorcery. Bewitch, sorcery. Sorcery. Hostility, quarrelings, jealousies, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, division, envy, drunkenness. You don't do that. Wild parties and other sins like these. I Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you hear me, family? So why am I saying this? I want you to inherit the kingdom of God. And I know so many of us for years, you know, we're, we're in the churches and we have people reading our horoscopes we have whole you know like you know what what you're at church oh i'm a i'm a libra i'm a, I'm a scorpio i'm a <laughs> family you can't be doing that we should have a fear of the lord which will bring us to the beginning of wisdom the bible says without holiness no one will see the lord no one not you not me so witchcraft is rebellion according to god Witchcraft in the church is rebellion. Teaching people to, to do this is rebellion. Okay? Let's go down to the church in Thyatira. Jesus is speaking to a church in the book of Revelation. It's, pro it's prophetic for us today. We, we better listen. Jesus says this. How do we know it's Jesus? Oh, it's in red. That's how you know. <laughs> Write the letter to the angel of the church in Thyatira. This is the message of the Son of God, who, whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. I know all the things you do. I have seen your love and fa your faith, your service, and your patient endurance, and I can see your constant improvement in all these things. Boy, that sounds like a great church. Maybe your church. I mean, it just, that sounds good. But I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her in on a bed of suffering, and those who commit adultery with her with suffering, will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from her evil deeds. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person, and I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. Who said that? Was that baby Jesus said that? Or was that, was that Jesus, the Lamb of God? The Lion of the tribe of Judah? Spiritual adultery, when he says sex and food stuck to idols, it's an image. When we worship other gods, when we do witchcraft, it's adultery to God. 
it's sexual sin. It's spiritual adultery. When we eat food sacrificed to idols, it means the deeds that we're doing, Jesus said, the food I, I Jesus, when his disciples sp- spoke to him in, in John chapter 4, and they said, yeah, he was hungry, and he was speaking to a Samaritan woman. They came back, and he, he says, uh, the food, the, he said, he, he's not hungry anymore. And he said, the food I have is to do the will of him who sent me. I mean, what we do can be food to our spirit. Witchcraft, witchcraft is rebellion. It's seeking spiritual power and authority to manipulate others. It is done, it it brings in supernatural power and authority by opening doorways and manipulating people who violate the laws of God. So let's talk about doorways. Doorways. Drugs are doorways. When you smoke or inject, you open doorways. There's a reason why a lot of these people take opioids and see all kinds of psychedelics, why a lot of uh, musicians and actors are smoking marijuana and they see things, a lot of music being written while people smoking up. There's a reason why. Because it opens spiritual doorways that demons can enter in enter in and these demons give blessings to people who worship them you do that for them and they do for you what have you done for me lately the demon says and you do for them and they do for you you can be a star just do this for me as you build their kingdom they bless yours they give you power they give you songs and and art and concepts and abilities and talents because you've opened doorways Through drugs. You know, there's a reason the devil deceives the whole world, and we're coming to a time of the B system. The B system is coming in now. I know you don't have to look around and see that witchcraft is growing. Satanism is Satanism is growing. Following Christ ain't becoming as popular as it used to be. And yes, there are some people who can see the signs and say, oh my gosh, it looks like we're in the end times. But there's also the growing of paganism, burning man, all these kind of psychedelic uh, experiences. You are opening a doorway. Witches have always concocted potions to create doorways that people drink, eat, inject, and it creates a state by which they can communicate with demons. And if you're doing it, you got to stop. And if you're not stopping, you will not inherit the kingdom. What you do is you go to God, you seek his faith, and you lay all on the altar of Christ Jesus. And you say, Jesus, you have said you heal me of all my sins and disease. Please heal me. Forgive me and heal me. Take this burden from me. Release me from this bondage of a demon. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to seek prayer and deliverance and fasting to break the yoke. And the name of Jesus cast out all demons, all powers. We don't need to be afraid of a demon. And witches themselves, we do not need to walk in fear of witches. Go look at this passage here. In Luke... And I believe it's Luke chapter 10. Let's let's look here. What verse? Um, Jesus says in verse 18, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Yes, he, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That's where your Shazam. That's your Shazam family. <laughs> More witchcraft. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But do not rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven, or your names are written in the book of life. Family, we, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall trample snakes. They shall, uh, whatever deadly thing, uh, snakes and scorpions, whatever deadly thing they drink will not harm them. 
we have authority over spiritual powers. And so what I'm saying to you is we do not need to fear. We need to fear a demon. Well, my camera just went out, so time to talk and just wrap it up. We do not need to fear a demon. We do not need to fear witchcraft if we stand on the solid rock of Christ. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. But if you are smoking drugs, that's a doorway that's being opened, and you need deliverance, and you need to stop. Alcoholism, getting drunk. We saw in Galatians 5.19 that those who live like that will not inherit the kingdom. You need to stop. You need to stop that. You need to stop going to the winter sol solstice dancing naked in the moonlight. <laughs> you need to stop. That's not something we should do. We need to make sure that we are devoted to the laws of God. What else is witchcraft? We talked about sex. As I told you, there are a lot of people in the porn industry choose to be witches. There are people that seek to build up the satanic order and they look to women looking and men looking to have sex with people to bring people in because they know that's the quickest way for demons to enter. You violate the laws of God, and the demon has legal right to come into you. That's why sex is in every movie, every show. And the more sex, more perverted sex. All the time. It's departed from the legal apparatus and will of God. We just thought, oh, people just wanted to have sex. But look what, I mean, come on, family. Look at what kind of sex. All, every kind of strange thing is beginning that we do not see as normal, even in nature. And some of you would shut down just that, but you do not understand the agenda. People do not understand for lack of knowledge because they would, re not, re they would not retain in their, their knowledge, the knowledge of God. He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Romans chapter 1. Because people are not retaining the basic. Something to say, you know, when we hear about sodomy, I, I guess I should talk about that in sex. When you hear about sodomy, the term sodomite is a male transgendered priest. It's a male prostitute. It's a male temple priest. See, we hear it, and it becomes something different today because we're ignorant. But the ancients knew that it was part of a sexuality religion, fertility cult, that there were prostitutes both male and female, who were available for people to have sex with, and they were demonically charged. And so when people had sex with them, they could worship with their God, the demon. Now, we are ignorant. The Bible says there's certain abominations, and sodomy is one of them. And when you commit it, it creates an abomination. Oh, yeah, you hear the term, the abomination. Okay, it shows. When you commit these sins, it creates darkness. It, oh, God will not dwell with that. The Holy Spirit, like a dove, will not come on that. And so it creates a space that the devil and certain classes of demons are allowed to enter. They enter into a people. They enter to, into a family, a community. When the doorways are allowed for that, certain witchcraft powers are allowed. Which is why you hear of all these things being done in certain satanic cults. Certain occultic orders. They're initiated through child sacrifice, through sodomy. See, family, we're ignorant. We're ignorant. We're just looking around thinking that the world is just unfolding. <laughs> Just no, naturally normal. No, it's being manipulated. The same offer that Satan gave to Jesus has been offered to families and people. And as long as they keep obeying, then that covenant stays in their bloodline. That's why you see the families, whatever profession they do, their children follow in suit, and they're, they're, they're doing a lot of the same strange things. You hear about all kinds of families, Rothschild, Rockefeller, all these families, ancient families staying. And they're pushing agendas. 
and you and I are totally ignorant. It's witchcraft agendas. It's witchcraft. They read the Bible and they see the laws of God that offer that that cannot be broken and they use those principles to advance their own. If God says you need to have be sealed with the Holy Spirit, go read the book of Revelations and look at Ephesians says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, they have to mark their people. Because the Bible says marking, it talks about marking, you should not tattoo yourself. You should not mark your flesh. I know tattoo is everywhere because witchcraft is everywhere. I know some of you say, where is the Bible? Okay, well, you can take a look in the Bible. You can take a look. Just all you have to do is Google tattoo Bible verse and see what shows up. Why am I saying this? Because we're ignorant. Now, if we sanctify ourselves off of these things and we put aside these things and we worship Jesus in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, that we love one another in, this, in that manner, that we, we worship God alone and we stop these detestable things, to, detestable to God, then we will see a blessing in these difficult times. He will preserve and protect you and your, your family, you and your people. You know, he's allowed the wheat and the tares to grow together. And the one who endures to the end will be saved. See, a lot of us are waiting for the rapture to take us on out of here. But I'm telling you, there ain't going to be no rapture. I'm telling you, that is not in the Bible. Instead, he who endures to the end, that it will get more and more wicked and wicked as in the days of Noah. But the righteous will, will endure. The one who stands on Christ, even though many fall away because they have made agreement with witchcraft. You need to know what witchcraft is and avoid it. You need to consider what you watch and listen to. You need to consider what kind of entertainment you take in, what, what kind of festivals you go to. You certainly need to stop doing the drugs. You need to stop uh, um, getting high and getting drunk. God is not going to give you a pass. He didn't give Jesus a pass. So he can't give you a pass. You know, you can't see my face here, and I, you know, I realize, yeah, maybe I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm chairing this lesson, and I'm trying to be as truthful because what good is for me to say all this to you? How what good is it for me to share the Bible and then not tell you the truth? Witchcraft is the devil's religion. It's the devil's covenant, and it's going to fill the whole earth. All these religions are all keeping it. I'll tell you what. You know, even the cross image that we have, the T, the cross, I don't know if Jesus was really crucified on a cross. It looks like the sign of her Tammuz, which is witchcraft. Time to reorder our thoughts. When we think about Christmas, it is really the birth of Tammuz. It's Saturnalia. It's a witchcraft festival. When we think of Easter or Ishtar, where in the Bible does it tell us to go paint some eggs? That has nothing to do. It's a witchcraft festival. See, you need to be keeping the feast of God in Leviticus 23 if you follow in Christ. Those are the works that he's doing. Each of those days that are set apart, no work can be done there. Oh, hallelujah, family. We are bombarded we are filled, completely deceived into a world of witchcraft. Is there a reason why in all these movies we see a cube, Rubik's Cube, square, cube everywhere? Well, it's six sides on a cube. Even when you see the Muslim religion, they're walking counterclockwise around a cube, six sides. Because six is the number of man. Six, six, six is the mark of the beast. And we are ignorant. It's time that we read the Bible. It's time that we pray. It's time that we fast. It's time that we look at the words of Jesus and do just what he said. To obey is better than sacrifice. To do just what he said. Oh, hallelujah.
How can you overcome witchcraft? What do you got to do? I mean, this is some heavy stuff. So how, how do we beat the, the witchcraft? How do we, we, we live? I, I want you to understand, again, I said, uh, you know, we looked at Ma- talked about uh, this. Pa- I'll just look at this passage here. Ma- Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, let's go to verse 24. The kingdom of God is like a farmer who planted good seed in the field, but at night the worker slept. His enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and slipped away. Then the crop began to grow and produce grains, and the weeds grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field that you planted, that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the father exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds? They asked. No, he replied, but you'll uproot the wheat with it if you do. Let both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell you the harvesters to sort out the weeds. Tie them up in bundles and burn them and put the, the wheat in the barn. Okay, so let's look ahead. Jesus interprets this down here. Let's see the, the parable of the wheat and weeds explained. Verse um, 36. You can tell I need some glasses, people. Then leaving the crowd as outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus Reply, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world, and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters of the angels. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun and the fathers in the Father's kingdom. Anyone who hears to anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Okay. Family. We are at the time where the angels are going to start gathering up. See, I know many of us are expecting to see these physical angels coming around and gathering up. But I'm saying to you that when you are participating in witchcraft, you are no longer standing in obedience to Christ. And you are doing what offends in God's kingdom. He's going to gather up people little by little. You know, we're in a time where that that big pit is opened up in the book of Revelation. How is that pit opened up? Well, when you're smoking weed and you're starting to see visions, that pit is opened up. When you're drunk out of your mind and you're seeing dead loved ones, that pit is being opened up. When you're having all this wild sex and start feeling new feelings and voices and emotions, you know, you're starting to have soul ties, that pit is opening up. When you're watching all these movies or playing video games, you can't stop. And every episode or everything is full of witchcraft and worship of witchcraft. I'm telling you that pit is opening up in your transcendental meditation and a spirit guy comes, a good friend, a nice person of light. I'm telling you the pit is opening up. It's opening up. And if you are doing these things and you're calling Christ, I'm telling you, you will not see him. In the last days, a great falling away is, will take place. I'm telling you, it's, it's underway. It's underway. It's not going to simply be that everyone who says that, Lord, they're all going to say, we're going to stop following Jesus. It's that they will no longer. It will be unaware. They will not know that they're no longer worshiping the God because the deceiver, the devil, masquerades as an angel of light. Yes, you're waiting for the good witch of the, of the West. The good witch. God don't see no good witch. Witchcraft is punished and judged. So what's the good news? The good news is you can repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. The good news, I I say this so often, and listen, it is the solution. It is the only way. The only way for salvation 
is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. God came to earth as a human, lived as a human, and sacrificed himself. That's the only way. No other being in the universe could do what he did. That's what it says in Revelation. No one could open up the book except Jesus. There is no other religion where this is possible because they worship other gods. There's only one most high creator God. You can say, well, I don't believe that. Okay, that's fine. But the tradition of the Hebrews, the Israelites, the one that came, Yahshua, Yah's salvation, he was the one who is the most high, who destroyed Egypt the, in such a manner that the dust still is on the pyramids now. It's still burnt to crisp. And he is coming back in the same fashion for his people. That's another talk. His people will be those filled with the Spirit and those who have a covenant of blood still scattered all over the earth. And this earth will be judged for what they've done to both. And this earth will be full of witchcraft and it's being filled now. Look, we have shows called Lucifer. We have people calling all these rappers gods, worshiping them. Wake up! You in the church, listening to these people and serving them, worshiping them. And they already told you they worship the devil. So hallelujah. Witchcraft in the church, we got to stop. We got to stop people. How do you know? When you talk to a brother and sister, you need to see where they're operating in witchcraft power, where they're operating in manipulation. If they are walking in the spirit with love, joy, peace, if you'll know them by their love. You'll know them by the fruit of the spirit on them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. If they're kind to you and then suddenly cut you off and are unkind, unloving, manipulative, cursing you, then they may have a witchcraft spirit in them. And they better repent. Or hell they going. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Jezebel was in the church. There are some of our worship leaders that use sexuality to draw. Use their gifts and talents to draw. There are preachers using their charisma to draw. But they're not using the word of God and his Holy Spirit. And you need to, believer, know that as you go to church and worship, that right around you, all around you, are tares. We're in the time where we need to be mature and stand on the words of Jesus. If you don't read the Bible, if you don't know anything about the Bible and you're just listening to people, how do you know if what they're saying to you is leading you astray? Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So how do you know that witchcraft ain't being taught to you? When you sprinkle a baby, where that in the Bible? Is that witchcraft? Is it? You got your Christian tattoo. Is that witchcraft? Your Christmas and your Easter, your Sunday worship, sun worship, Apollyon, who comes out the pit. Now, I'm not saying here that some of you who... The Bible says when we do things in ignorance, it's different than we do for willfully. But it's time now where the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in the truth. For this is what God seeks, those who care about the truth, who seek the truth, to worship him in truth. Shouldn't be looking at your horoscope, brother and sister. So, hallelujah. Witchcraft in the church, repent and be baptized, each of you. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is to you and to your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. That's what you need to do. You need to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he, the Spirit will come. You'll be filled with the Spirit, and he will lead you out of witchcraft into all truth. No, you can't just fight witchcraft on your own. No, this is a real power in the earth. Satan defeated man. But Jesus defeats Satan, has defeated Satan, and continues to defeat him 
in each of you who surrendered to Christ. We have authority over witchcraft. If we, if we stand on Christ and his promises, we walk in righteousness and the forgiveness of sins. Then in the name of Jesus Christ, we shall, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue condemn. You condemn it. If someone says a curse, you condemn it. It shall not happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am a child of God. I am a priest of God. And what you say, touch not my anointed. That's what the Bible says. Touch not his anointed. But this world, they're condemning Christians. These movies condemning. All these witchcraft people are infiltrating, condemning, and they're touching the anointed. And that is why you are going to see in the West and all over this earth, but particularly the West, a judgment coming on them. Come out of her, my people, so you do not share in her sins. Come out of the practices. Start imitating Christ and let Christ live in you. If this is new to you, if you, maybe some of the things I've said offended you, I don't mean to be offensive. offensive. I mean to be truthful and loving. I don't know who is hearing the sound of my voice. I don't know who's listening in the future or present, but I pray in the name of Jesus that this word bless you, and I bless you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you are hearing this gospel of the kingdom and coming out of the worship of other gods, out of spiritual adultery and the manipulation of demonic energy. Everything's energy, trying to move things like Luke Skywalker. How do you think he's moving it? It's demonic witchcraft. A lightsaber using the light of Lucifer to fight? Baron, wake up. The Bible says that the word of God is a double-edged sword. So what the word of the devil? Oh, hallelujah. Those of us in Christ, we, are, we find freedom. You watch these TV shows, and they're indoctrinating you without you even knowing it. You begin to know so much about witchcraft that all they have to do is give you a title. You're already in the first area, first three levels of the, of the lodge, if you know what I'm saying, the blue lodge. For those of you who know, all these stars that you see, they all seem to be doing some kind of a great work to cap the pyramid. And they're now worshiping Jesus. You need to look at everything you do and compare it to what Jesus would do or want you to do. See whether God condemned it in the law or, or gave it a blessing. And you need to act appropriately as a priest of God. He shall not share his glory with another. So let me, let me close up here. Let's go to the end. Let's go to the very end of the Bible. Jesus is saying, look, I am coming soon. Bring, this is Re Revelations, um, chapter 22, verse 12. Look, I am coming soon. Bring my reward with me and repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, repent and be baptized. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, uh oh, the witches. The sexual immoral, immoral, the murderers, the, idol, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. You don't want to be outside the city at the end. You don't want to be in darkness. Christian, disciple, Israelite, you need to make sure you are not doing any witchcraft. You need to examine your ways, the books you're reading, what you're doing, and not making agreement. Because our, God, our God's will is holiness. 
Our God's will is our sanctification. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, our sanctification. We need to be sanctified, be made holy. And witchcraft, he will not abide in any way. Those who live like that, according to Galatians 5, 19, will not inherit the kingdom of God. You won't go to heaven. You cannot be a Christian witch. You cannot be a Christian wizard. Though the Lord of the Rings and the music, and boy, you know, Gandalf fights, but Gandalf, a wizard, your enemy. And so is Scarlet Witch. They're not your friend. They're not your partner. They're your enemy, and you're being trained as a slave to love your enemy. But to love and revere your enemy, to be your enemy, not like love your enemy in the Bible where we forgive. No, they want you to be deceived into thinking that the enemy of your people is really your friend. Those movies, those, that music, those rituals, that social media trend, though, that newscast, and you hear the numbers all add up to 666 or 36 or 18 or some 23 or 20. Oh, come on, family. It all witchcraft, I'm telling you. Word speech. And so it's time for us to, to not be foolish. The time where the, 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 the children of, of this world, wise and the children of light, need to come to an end. Instead, we need to be a mighty army proclaiming a gospel that is rooted on Christ and does not share a glory with another. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that this message uh, edifies you greatly. I pray that you come out of all the works of Babylon, a witchcraft nation. And our whole Western world is Babylon. Just like Nebuchadnezzar told people to bow down or die, so we are calling people to bow down to the customs that are contrary to the word of God or die. And I say to you, stand with the Father, and he shall be the one in the flames, the Son of God, who will give you strength to stand. He shall be there with the Holy Spirit, and he shall anoint you and bless you and keep you and give you peace. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, have a wonderful day. And I pray that you continue to walk in that blessing. Show me.
somewhere in the distance Far beyond what eyes can see Lies the truth for which we struggled For which we dared to dream me mm-hmm.